Can you simplify the Oedipal complex? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> so much for that question. Um, well, I'm not sure I can simplify it, but I can say that something happens around the age of three to six where kids are, for the first time, able to see that two other people might have a relationship with each other that's not about them. Up till age three, they're pretty egocentric, you know? It's, um, it's like, this is about me or it's about you. <laughs> but they begin to um, expand around the age of three or four, where they, they get interested in people's relationships with other people. Now, Freud got kind of excited by that, by the child's fantasies about what the father and the mother were doing. And um, it is true that many kids, especially in this kind of culture, which has a nuclear family and makes a fishbowl out of the three parties, the two parents and the child in, in uh, most setups, um, that we create a kind of intensity around that and I you know I, I remember a conversation between my two daughters and my niece when my niece was a, just turning three and my older daughter was I think 10 and my younger daughter was seven and we're all the four of us are having dinner together and my niece announces when I grow up I'm going to marry my daddy and my um, younger daughter says, oh, I, I know just what you mean, Emily. When I was your age, I wanted to marry my daddy, too. And Emily kind of hears the implicit no <laughs> in that comment. And she says, but I'm going to marry my daddy. And my younger daughter, who is an empath, says to her, I'm sorry to tell you this, Emily, but um, you're not allowed to marry your daddy. There's a law against that. Um, you can't marry anybody in your own family. And Emily thinks about that in a moment and says, my mommy and my daddy are married to each other and they're in the same family. And Helen then at this point throws her hands up and turns to her older sister. And her older sister says, Mom, remember when I was Emily's age and I used to tell you when I grow up I'm going to marry daddy? I said, yeah, I remember that. She said, well, and you used to say, I'm sorry, Susan, uh, you can't do that because I'm already married to him. Um, and I said, uh, yeah, I remember saying that too. She said, um, and I used to say, that's okay, you'll be dead. <laughs> Is my whole family reading Freud? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, I thought I should have tape recorded this. Nobody's going to believe this. But it, I, I guarantee it happened mm -hmm. pretty much like that. Um, so you hear that, of course, children are, when they start getting interested in how people relate to each other as grown-ups, they, they, they want to run off with the people that they know and that they love, and it bothers them that, that these people are taken. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, but more important than that, they, are, they have reached a developmental level of being able to see that there's something between these two that's not about them. So it's a triumph over the egocentrism of the younger years. And most people who have been interested in stage theories of development, like Peter Fonagy, for example, um, he got more, much more, Freud was interested in the sexual fantasies that went with that, but Fonagy was very interested in the fact that the kid is beginning to learn to mentalize. You know, uh, in other words, to see other people as subjects, not just objects, and to get interested in what's in their minds. You know, what is it like to be married to daddy? Or how does daddy feel about mommy? Or how, do, how does one mother feel about the other mother if you've got gay parents, for example? It's not, it doesn't have to be a heterosexual dyad, although Freud assumed the normality of that. Um, you see these dynamics even in single parent families because the kids will, will realize that their parent has relationships with other people. And so you see the same transition to the capacity to imagine other people's minds and that's that's the importance of that phase because some people don't fully master that 
phase. And there are many people out there who, who treat others as objects, who can't really imagine others as subjects, who, who project instead of empathizing, you know. Um, and a lot of our patients have trouble imagining, for example, that we might wish the best for them. <laughs> they, in certain states of mind, they are convinced we're exactly like a pathogenic parent. Um, and that's a, a failure of mentalization. So I, I, when the old analysts talked about pre-edible versus edible patients, they meant that the patients they were calling pre-edible were people who were still stuck on the question of um, who am I and how am I going to use you to get what I need? And the, um, the people who'd gotten to the Oedipal level had internalized um, some capacity to see others as subjects and to see that they would have an internal conflict that, you know, I, like the child in the traditional Oedipal situation feels like, um, I want to kill off one parent so I can have the other one, but I love that parent. So you get the capacity eventually for normal ambivalence and feeling two ways about something. You know, my daughter who said I'd be dead obviously loves me too. Uh, and that, that went without saying, but if you don't get to the Oedipal phase, you tend to feel only one side of that kind of thing at a time which can create a lot of trouble for you. Wonderfully answered.